Josh Duggar's trial starts today. I do want to give a trigger warning at the beginning of this video and all my Josh Duggar videos because they talk about the nastiness that he is charged with. It has to do with kids. I don't even like to say the word, so I just call it like it is. Nastiness. But if you are triggered by any sort of child abuse talk, I appreciate you for clicking on this video. I appreciate the support, but you can go ahead and click off this video because I don't want to hurt, offend, or trigger anybody. Now, with that said, yesterday I reported that the jury selection for the trial starts today, and a lot of people were questioning in the comments, well, how long will that take? That could take a while, blah, blah, blah. So I decided to Google and do a little research on how long the jury selection process could take. The first thing that popped up said about 20% of prospective jurors are actually selected for trials. You can expect to be finished in approximately half a day if you aren't selected to serve. If you are selected, your jury service length is one trial. While many TV shows and movies show lengthy trials, most trials last from one to three days. Now that, you, uh, uh, trials last longer than one to three days, okay? I mean, yeah. So we done some more reading, okay? I done some more looking up, some more research. It took the judge and attorneys in Wisconsin just one day to choose the panel of 20, 12 jurors and eight alternates for Rittenhouse trial, but legal experts say the speedy process doesn't mean the jurors aren't capable of delivering the fair verdict. The 18-year-old was charged with shooting three men during a protest in Kenosha, killing two of them. Some worry that comparisons to the lengthy jury selection in other high-profile homicide cases, including the two weeks spent seating a jury in the trial of former Police officer Derek Chauvin could undercut the Kenosha, the Kenosha panel's credibility. Okay, now that was, I guess, just in Kenosha. But I'm trying to show you that there's different links, different time frames. So we need to keep that in mind. Now, since the jury selection for the trial will start today, I don't think the actual trial will start today. If you get what I'm saying. Now, I don't know, child, because I am not no legal beagle. I am not no expert over here. I am no Emily D. Baker. You'll have to go over there and get all the legal terms. Because, child, you ain't going to get no legal terms over here. You see, I had to Google the damn jury selection. <laughs> I mean, I'm keeping it real. I do want to keep up with this. I am keeping up with this. So, we're going to talk about and discuss it all. And if there's some stuff we don't know, child, we're going to Google it. Together. Together. And then we're going to discuss on here, and y'all going to let me know in the comments and correct me when I'm wrong. And I'm going to take accountability, and we're going to clear it all up. We are here to discuss and give our opinions and thoughts. Now, look, this is the latest, y'all. A Duggar family friend provides troubling testimony in the Josh Duggar nastiness case. Now, this right here, she's about to go into detail, y'all. So, trigger warning again. Please Click off this video. Exit this video if you are triggered by any of this. Because, child, she's about to go into detail. And it's disturbing. It is really disturbing. A Duggar family friend provides troubling testimony in the Josh Duggar case. Josh Duggar's three-hour pre-trial court hearing on Monday included troubling testimony from a close Duggar family friend about his previous confessions. Before the 19 Kids and Counting alum's federal child nastiness trial, Bobby Holt testified that Josh confessed to his parents and her in 2003 that he had done very nasty things to four younger girls beginning when he was 12 years old. Josh's upcoming trial will hinge on Holt's testimony as the judge must decide whether or not to admit evidence that Josh has previously committed 
the same thing that he's being charged with now. Josh first confessed to his parents, Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar, in 2002, and then to their best friends, Holt and her husband, in 2003 and 2005, according to People. Holt testified in court Monday. Holt got choked up as she remembered Josh telling her he had touched the four girls, referred to in court as Jane Doe's, one through four on their boobs and their privates. After being summoned by Jim Bob in March 2003 about quote-unquote what Josh had done. Josh explained that during Bible time, Jane Doe 4 was sitting on his lap and he touched her inappropriately, she said. He stated that it took place on that particular day. He told us he touched her on her private area on that date, he later, only later did Holt reveal that Josh had touched the girl's underwear. Josh inappropriately touched one of the girls in February of 2002, prompting her to tell her parents, and then he confessed, according to Holt. In 2003, he touched Jane Doe 4, as Holt recalled through tears. He put his hand under her pantaloons and under her panties while she was sitting on his lap. She testified, adding that Josh had touched the girls both inside and outside their genitals. Josh said he went to one of the girls while she was sleeping and got under her blanket and started touching her and she woke up and hit him, according to Holt. Holt remembered, he told me she snitched on him. Josh has pleaded not guilty to federal child nastiness charges with his lawyers claiming in court documents that other people had access to the computer at his place of business where the child nastiness material was discovered. Let me tell you something. Hearing that testimony, hearing what he confessed to the Bible study lady, y'all, that makes me so angry and furious right now. How? How? Could you do that to kids? I don't give up. You underage or not, you don't do that. Like, I get kids are curious and stuff, but if he repeatedly touched people, touched kids, you know, either the same age or not, even though they said the the girl was younger than him. You don't do that, okay? You just don't do it. It's not excusable. You do not do that. Now, them girls clearly didn't want him doing that. Okay? They're kids. They didn't know. But in one of them, y'all, didn't she say he got up under the covers, under the blanket, and was touching her, and she hit him? Okay, clearly. You wasn't invited over. What the heck? Y'all, y'all, I'm over here like, excuse me? I'm glad I'm not that trial. I am. Because let me tell you, I would probably be very vocal. I would probably look over and about, you sack of shit. Like, literally, I would. I can't stand somebody who mistreats kids. And this right here is bottom of the barrel, okay? This mug right here, I am well convinced if he is convicted, which I hope and pray, I hope and pray he is convicted. That's what we can do right now is pray he is convicted. Let me tell you something. I'm convinced if he's convicted when he gets in jail, He'll get took care of. He'll get his. He'll get what he deserves in jail. He sure will. Because right now, he's still living that privileged life that he's always lived. He's never had to face consequences. He didn't have to go to no damn rehab. He went to build houses and do some construction work. He went to go help a family friend. He didn't go to no damn rehab. Excuse me? He ain't never had to face the consequences for the messed up stuff he's done. 
minor or not. And if them kids were minors or not, it don't matter. He still done it. You don't do that. You were brought up and taught and raised not to do that. Or was he? Or was he taught and brought up to do the things that he's doing or done and is being charged with? That's my suspicion. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you something. I was standing up for Anna before, and I go back and forth on this, okay? I'll, I'll admit it. I'm a flip-flopper on Anna because... Part of me, a tiny little part of me, and this was before I heard this testimony, a tiny part of me was saying, maybe she was just raised to think, you know, she ain't nothing without a man, and, you know, she can't amount to nothing. Maybe she was brought up to believe that once you marry somebody, you can't divorce them because you just can't do that. Like, God will, you know, send you straight to hell if you divorce somebody, you know, because a lot of people are brought up like that in the South. A lot of people. I don't know about everywhere else because I ain't never lived anywhere else. I have bo I was born and raised in the South. And I can tell you from experience, people are absolutely raised to believe that way. Girls, women are absolutely led to believe they can amount to nothing. Divorce is a sin and all that jazz. So see, a tiny little part of me was thinking, well, she was part of that probably. Her parents probably brought her up to think that way, and her family's probably like, no, you cannot divorce. Divorce is a sin. Okay, I get it, because I know families like that, okay? There's family members that I have in my family that are like that. Okay? That's why I know this. But let me tell you something. After learning about what he's done, you know she's heard about it. I mean, you have to be deaf, dumb, and blind to not have heard about this, okay? She's heard about it. The fact that she's still standing there with a damn smile on her face has me over here wanting to be like, Girl, wake your ass up. You are standing beside somebody who has been charged with child nastiness and you got seven kids. Girl, take care of your kids. But look, that's just my opinion. That is my opinion. And we all got opinions on this. But let me tell you something. <laughs> when it comes to kids and the mistreatment of kids, child, you don't put your kid first. That's a problem with me. That's just how I was raised. That's what I believe. That's, that's, that's just me. You don't take care of your kids. That's a problem. You clearly ain't taking care of your kids because you're standing beside a man that's been charged, and he ain't no man. But you're standing beside somebody posing as a man who has been charged with doing nasty things to kids, looking at kids in a nasty way, and you've got kids with them. You keep producing kids with them, reproducing, whatever. It's nasty. Now, look, I'm going to keep you all up to date on all the developments in this Josh Duggar trial. I told y'all I was going to. I'm dedicated to it, and I'm going to. I'm going to deliver the latest developments in this nasty trial. So, y'all go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Click that bell to all. That way, you'll be notified every time I upload. And you never know when I'm going to upload. Whenever something comes out, whenever I catch something, I'm going to put it out there. And we're going to discuss I love you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in my next video. Remember, we don't know yet about how long uh, jury selection will take, so let me know in the comments if you know. Bye, y'all.